I am Sarah Smith. I am the principal of East Hampton High School, which is where we are right now, and I am very glad to live here in East Hampton. I think going through many people's mind was we may be out of school for two weeks. That was sort of the timeline that we were given, and then we would be back, and we would be safe and back in our classroom. Clearly that did not happen. <laughs> we were out for much longer and had to adjust so many things that we were used to and reinvent sort of the way we did school. I don't think many of us in education understood the safety measures we would have to put in place. It was bizarre to be talking about social distancing in school and putting up barriers and vaccines and you know, handing out test kits to students. It was just nothing we ever thought we would come across when we signed up to be educators. I think with high school students, it was particularly challenging because each student has a unique schedule, unlike the elementary school where it's one class. So you could space out those classes and use the library at the high school level, you had to do a hybrid schedule, which meant certain students were in person on Monday, Tuesday, others were Thursday, Friday. So you had to then navigate students being virtual some days and then in person other days. And I think the biggest challenge at the high school level, and this is coming right from our students, was helping students maintain structure when they had no structure. So when students come into school, you know, they get up, they shower, they get on the bus, they come to school, um, that structures and bookends their day. Um, and they're used to the nine period bell schedule uh, where they go from class to class. And even our top students um, just yesterday said the hardest part of the pandemic was you didn't have that structure that school provides, that you had to create that for yourself at home as a 16-year-old um, and structure your day and stay organized and get your work done and go to class without having that system in place to support you. Even though there may be a gap in some of their content knowledge, some of our seniors yesterday said that they actually do feel more prepared for college because they were forced into that level of independence. You realize how important school is in the life of a student, that it's so much more than just going to class. It's sports, it's doing the play, it's going to the concert, it's volunteering. And when all of that was stripped away, students really lost out. And you realize that from a mental health perspective, students need those extras. They need to be here after school. They need to be active. And so when we weren't able to do it, it really affected them. However, last year, we were able to modify the sports schedule. So they were at least able to get an abbreviated season and you know, switching, switching the seasons around, outdoor sports, and so they were able to play, which was great um, and so necessary. And we're so thrilled that now we are back to normal with sports. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Our motto was return to normal, and we were all very much in that mindset. And I think for the most part, we were able to, but in terms of you know, the reality is we weren't fully able to be back to normal yet. You know, we're still masked. We had to go virtual for a bit. We had the variant. We also have our students returning from a pandemic <laughs> who were not quite back to normal yet. So for instance, our teachers had adjusted um, to meet the students where they were. For instance, more lenient deadlines or a modified workload. Um, now coming back to normal, um, we're returning to a regular workload, you know, um, concrete deadlines. And that adjustment has been difficult for students um, that they're, you know, sort of like if you are not running for a year and then all of a sudden you are, are expected to run 10 miles.
I think we all have a sense of empathy and understanding now um, of, you know, each other's plight <laughs> um, that I think our students really gained, um, how would I say it, a sense of the world beyond themselves and that they're, they have an appreciation for things that they didn't have before. Um, you know, appreciation for school, for being in school. They've experienced food scarcity now, you know, what, what, it, what it looks like in the grocery store when there's nothing there. Um, they, in some cases, had to care for loved ones who were sick. And for the first time, I think, um, and a student said this yesterday, for the first time, I think that generation understood what it meant to be afraid of an illness or afraid to get something. And so that sense of vulnerability um, and humility is something that I think, I think our students won't forget. I think our um, adults won't forget. Um, and so, so that piece of it, I don't think we'll, I hope we'll never sort of get rid of that. Um, and I think it added a layer of understanding of the human condition to um, not only adolescents and high school students, but you know, even for adults. I would say just hearing everything that our students were going through, you know, when we would do home visits or when we would speak with families, you know, coming to hear that students were taking care of their parents or in many cases, we would um, come to learn that high school students who had younger siblings might not be logging on to Zoom or their class because they were watching their younger sibling. And that was a human need that trumped the need to get on to class. trying. I would say it was trying. 